All right, we are back with the Web3 series that I started months ago. But as you can see, the things that I said about us coming into a crypto bull market, aka the speculative mania, otherwise known as a crypto bull market, uh, has come to pass. We had our first little run up. That's not the last one. We're still in the middle of the cycle, and it really go it's going to go till um, around November-ish, around Christmas time, holidays time of next year. So we should get a little bit of a lull. Uh, but it gives an opportunity to look at some of the big things that came through and then to sort of see the thesis and the ideas that I've presented to you and to see them, pardon me, to see them in the, uh, in the light of the things that have already happened. And I think one of the most important things that the last couple of months, the last few months, certainly since the, um, since the halving, gives us to talk about is Bitcoin as a ledger. Because many of the things that we saw now that we're seeing on BTC, BTC is going to try to make a Web3 play, whereas it had just mostly been EVM chains that were doing it. Bitcoin's going to try to make that play. Obviously, we were doing it on other chains besides BTC. We were able to do a whole bunch of things. But BTC has been broken. And finally, the Lightning narrative looks like it's dying because Lightning doesn't work. They're using Taproot ordinals they had a new runes protocol which is uh very similar to protocols that we've had for literally years since like 2018 on the other um bitcoin networks just because btc has been broken so they have to do things in super complicated ways to do the same things that you could do very easily on the other chains because uh, the appropriate changes have been made on those chains so what i want to talk about and the concept is about the value of bitcoin and what bitcoin uh, really is and it gives us a chance to talk about the ledger and the value of the ledger and the way that I want to start is uh, oftentimes when I talk to people about why is Bitcoin important people who are not really involved in crypto they're not Bitcoiners in any way anything like that I'll often start like this I'll often say okay here's how you can understand the the value of Bitcoin I say is the Visa network valuable the Visa network that's like the card network is that valuable, the credit cards, not like a passport visa, but the visa network, the card network, is it valuable? They say yes. I say, well, how valuable is it? Like, how valuable is that network to the global economy? It's almost immeasurable. I mean, we could measure the amount of money going through, but that's not the real measurement, is it? Like, it's not really all the money going through. It's the fact that money can go through that enables all kinds of businesses to start up and do things and take payments. Because even if I'm a business that accepts Visa, Visa is valuable to me even if I'm not at that moment taking a Visa payment, right? Because it's just the simple fact that I can take payment in Visa allows me to market to more customers than I otherwise would be able to. So I say, well, what's the value of the Visa, Visa network? Almost invaluable, right? Now, the Visa network is a network that is um, managed by its member banks. So it's a network of banks. And the banks are necessary. Got the school bus coming here. The banks are necessary to actually get the funds moved all around. Obviously, I'm a merchant. You're a buyer. You have a bank. I have a bank. We need to get the money between the banks. Okay. So the banks are very, very necessary. They're a necessary part of the Visa network. They're the most important part of the Visa network. So I asked them, well, okay, if the Visa network is valuable, how valuable would it be if you could do the same thing that you could do on the Visa network now, but you didn't need any of the banks, the hundreds or thousands of banks that are involved, and you could do it without any of the banks? Would the Visa network, which is already, we've established, hyper-valuable, would it be more or less valuable? And when you think about that, think about something like this. Your car, right? We're gonna assume you have a gas gasoline car. Your car needs gasoline and you pay petrol and you pay some amount of money you know, every time you fill up for that and that costs you some amount of money every year. Your car, all things being equal, if you could do everything you could do in your car but you didn't need to put in gasoline, you didn't have that dependency, would your car be worth more than the car that you have now or less if it didn't need gasoline? And the answer is obvious, less dependencies, for the same thing, more valuable, right? Because it costs less to operate. And that's the same thing with Bitcoin. So if Visa is valuable, almost invaluable, and you need the banks, if you could have a network where you could do everything that Visa can do, but you didn't, 
need the banks. Obviously, that network would be more valuable. So this starts to get us, even as a normie, you could talk to normies about it, and they can immediately get, oh, ooh, that is something valuable, right? Now, you could go off in cult land, DTC Maxi cult land, and talk about digital gold and all this stuff, but you really don't need to. You could just talk about Bitcoin for what it is, which is an electronic cash network, okay? It's an electronic cash system. Okay, so how does this network operate or what's the secret sauce? What did Satoshi Nakamoto bring to the game? What is the problem that he went and solved? Okay, if you've got the Visa network, the most important thing about the Visa network is the Visa network has a centralized ledger, okay? Somewhere in the Visa network, Visa has a record of every transaction that's ever taken place, right? They would have to. How else could you do a chargeback? How else could you go and, and, and check your, uh, your balance as a merchant? Yes, sure, it goes through all kinds of payment processors and the whole thing. You have all kind of acquiring banks. Like I said, there's member banks. So there's individual ledgers all around. But Visa is keeping the master ledger. Okay, so you need this master centralized ledger. So what Satoshi Nakamoto came to figure out was, okay, I'm going to build a Visa network but it can't have a centralized ledger. There's no centralized party. So how do I do that? And the answer is I have to have a means that anybody can agree on the truth, the veracity of a, of a ledger that they're shown, particularly if they're shown two different ledgers that are both claiming to be true. You show me a ledger, this guy shows me a ledger. Both of you say, these are true. This is the real history, but they're different. How can I decide? How can anyone decide? And everyone decide which one is the real ledger and which one isn't. And the simple answer that he came up with was proof of work. And that's mining and that's blocks and all of this. But the important thing here to understand is that it is a ledger. And it is a ledger, a record of history that everybody can agree upon without knowing or trusting anybody else who's participating in it with them. And that is groundbreaking. And that is why proof of work is incredibly valuable. And we'll talk more about that as well. Proof, proof of work as versus proof of stake. Proof of stake just is, is a, really a bastardization because you've forgotten what it is you're trying to do in the first place. But remember this, it's the ledger. And the Satoshis, the native currency, the things that people are buying, what he developed is he developed a way for everybody to have a ledger, but then you're going to run into the tragedy of the commons, right? Which is why I do this out here at a park. You know, one of our nice parks here, Sugar King Park. Okay? And you see there's, it's a commons. There's people walking around, and somebody might bring their dog. But back in the day, you had a commons and people would graze their sheep and do all kinds of things. And it's like, well, if it's a common area and I've got sheep, I'm going to bring them out here and use up the resources, right? So that's the tragedy of the commons that it gets used up. So you have to have some way of regulating access to the commons. And so that's the individual Bitcoin or the BTC, the ETH, the BCH. What that is for is that's basically how you, you got to use that as the raw material and the payment. That's your access ticket to put something in the ledger. But what you can put in the ledger is almost unlimited. So that's what you're seeing, more tokeniz tokenization. All the networks had been doing this, but now that BTC, that's what this cycle is really going to be about, is a return to tokenization on BTC, which had been gone for years, almost a decade. There had really been no tokenization on BTC to speak of since the days of Counterparty and Omni. You know, it had gone to other chains really, really since Ethereum. And that's why Vitalik made Ethereum. But now they're moving in that direction. That's where a lot of the traffic is coming from. People are thinking about it again. And so it's not, tokens are not just, you know, they're putting meme coins now, but there's a lot of different things that are that you can tokenize. And particularly important is identity, which we've talked about right? So you're going to see a lot more about identity. That's a huge part of Web3 is identity on the blockchain. We'll talk about that even more. Uh, I talk about it, of course, in CounterMarkets, countermarkets.com. You can go and, uh, and get your first issue for free of that. I'm also restarting Bitcoin Mystery School, so I'll be announcing that. I already have the first class 
Uh, we're going to actually do it this weekend, but I only announced it to former students and counter market subscribers. So I'll probably start announcing to the public. Maybe I'll even jump back on my socials, which I have been off for more than a year and uh, and announce that if you want to come and check out bitcoin mystery school and then of course be a part of the the community so i will talk to you next time now the kids are out of school so it's actually light when i get out of the gym so i'll be doing more of these all right talk to you soon